A new study is raising some questions about colonoscopy screenings and how much they actually reduce deaths from colon cancer. The study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine and found that participants who were offered a colonoscopy had only 18 percent lower rates of colon cancer. Researchers say those patients had about the same risk of death from the disease 10 years down the line. And joining me now is Dr. Yuri Ladebaum from Stanford Healthcare. Thank you for joining us. Uh, those headlines are suggesting that colonoscopies are not as effective as we thought. So is that really the case? Good question. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. No, I don't think that's the case. And one needs to think about the results very carefully. There are two things that we need to bear in mind. The study is very important because it takes a whole view of what can we achieve at the population level, but it's essentially a study of an invitation to colonoscopy. So a very important question is how many people actually took up that invitation, and it was 42%. Among the ones who took up the invitation, the results were actually much better than the numbers that you showed, a reduction in death of about 50% of death related to colorectal cancer, the risk of getting colon cancer cut down by about one third. So if people do it, then of course it can be effective. If people don't do it, they do not. There are also issues about how well colonoscopy is performed. And many experts are saying that nowadays with current techniques, with our attention to quality, colonoscopy is expected to perform even better than it did in this study. So participation and colonoscopy quality are very important issues here. So is there a concern that some people might be looking at the study and saying they don't need to get a colonoscopy? So how do you, how do you convince them? Yeah, so I think that is a very real concern that the headlines may be confusing people. I would say the most important message is we know that col colorectal cancer is common. Many people die from it and many of those deaths are preventable. We know that colorectal cancer screening works. It can be with colonoscopy or it can be with other methods. So I would discuss with patients the potential benefits versus the potential downsides. Not everyone needs a colonoscopy as the test. There are other tests such as stool tests that would be done first and only if abnormal, then patients go to colonoscopy. So I think the answer is discussion with patients about the great benefit of screening. It can be with colonoscopy, it can be with something else. It would be a misunderstanding of the study to say colon cancer screening doesn't work or colonoscopy doesn't work. That is not what the study showed. Okay, and so what age do you recommend people to get their first colonoscopy and how often should they get them? So people who are at general risk, meaning they don't have family history of cancer or other risk factors, the current recommendations in the United States are to start at 45. If that colonoscopy is normal, then it is done every 10 years, usually through the 70s, and then one can discuss the risk to benefit depending overall health of the patients. All these numbers are different. If people have higher risk, we start earlier. We repeat colonoscopy more often, including in patients who have precancerous polyps that were removed that were at higher risk, then they come back to colonoscopy at a shorter interval for, from the 10-year one. So the age is now 45. When, when did that change? That's in the last few years. Okay. And in the United States, that was led by the American Cancer Society. They were the first to make those recommendations. But the other major societies came by later in agreement with that. The reason is that for reasons that we do not totally understand, the risk of colon and rectal cancer has gone up in younger people. So the way to think about it is like this. People said, what used to happen in the 50s is now happening in the late 40s. Shouldn't we screen earlier? And research is accumulating that that makes sense. So in terms of general recommendation in the United States, average risk nowadays start at 45. All right. Always good information. Dr. Yuri Ladebaum from Stanford Healthcare. Thank you very much. Thank you.